Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to be doing sort of a different style of video. Now, I know I started this channel with the goal of financial independence, retire early. And recently I've been doing a lot of stock videos. So I've been talking about specific stocks. And I know a lot of people have been just sort of waiting for more topics and more videos on specifically financial independence, retire early topics. So today we're going to be talking about a topic along those lines. So in today's video, we're doing the Greek Hotel. Now, before I begin, you guys know what time it is. Yeah, that's right. This is a fire video, so you know what that means. Quarantine memes. Let's go. You guys thought I forgot about that, didn't you? No, it's still here. So I told you guys that this was going to be a permanent section of this channel and permanent section of these kind of videos. So here it is. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that and excuse me if I'm sweating a little it's really hot in this room so the weather's really heat up over the past few days I think it's like it's like literally 26 27 degrees in this room right now Celsius by the way we here in Canada we use real temperatures <laughs> That's why I'm sweating a little and if you see me doing this and it's really gross, I know, but uh, there's not that much I can do. So yeah, today I thought we'd read a little story from my book, Financial Independence Theory, and I thought this would be a great way to give myself a little plug too. This book is available on Amazon, by the way, and I think it's really interesting and I do think that it's really valuable. So if you guys are interested, please consider picking it up. And if not, no big deal, no worries, no pressure, right? So it's completely voluntary. But if you do, it helps me, it helps the channel, and it helps me continue to make these videos going forward. Anyways, uh, I'll just be reading a small excerpt of my book. And this is from part one, and it's called Wealth is Abundant. And it tells the story of the Greek hotel. So without further ado, let's go. Imagine that you're the owner of a hotel on the beautiful Greek island of Santorini in 2012. Amidst one of the worst financial crises your country has ever experienced in decades. Everyone you know is in debt, including yourself. There are many hotels on the island, and competition is stiff. You have to make sure that your rooms are of the highest possible quality, lest the tourists decide to stay somewhere else. It's been a slow day, but now a man walks in. He is wearing dark sunglasses, a Hawaiian shirt, and cargo shorts. Nothing about him indicates that he is rich until you see his Rolex and hear him boast loudly on the phone about his latest investment in big oil. His use of the English language suggests that he does not speak a word of Greek. He then approaches you with a stack of cash that turns out to be a thousand euros, informing you that whoever he had just been talking to had been to your hotel last year, and that person told him that your hotel was the finest on the island. He tells you that he needs to verify this claim and is willing to put down this amount of money as a deposit while he inspects the room. If he finds it satisfactory, he will stay here tonight. If not, he will take his money and leave. You agree to this, and the man leaves to inspect the room. You are confident that he will find the room satisfactory, and the room has a beautiful view of the ocean, and you just had it cleaned this morning. You are so confident, in fact, that you do not wait until the man returns to use the money to pay back your dentist who had performed the root canal on you last week on credit, seeing as you were in pain but did not have the money to pay for the operation right away. Your dentist is delighted at getting his pay, and as soon as you are out of sight, he turns around and goes to the butcher. Being a dentist these days means that one doesn't make as much as one used to, and he's racked up quite a bit of debt with the butcher for those steaks he's been eating for the past few months. Unfortunately for the dentist, the butcher had been in no need of any root canal work. The butcher is delighted at getting repaid. He waits until the dentist is out of sight to visit a prostitute. Being a butcher is stressful. His income had become less and less consistent as the price of his products soared, and fewer and fewer of his customers are able to afford expensive steaks. In these trying times, can one really blame him for wanting a little extra love on the side? The ever-so-lovely Katerina had agreed to perform her services on credit, and the butcher is now able to repay her. Having just got back from your brisk walk to the dentist's office, you're surprised to see Katerina waiting for you at the front desk. 
She thanks you for all the times you have allowed her to bring clients to your hotel and allow them to stay on credit. She pulls out a stack of bills and happily tells you that she's finally able to pay you back. She hands you exactly 1,000 euros. Just at this moment, the man in sunglasses returns from his room inspection. He seems a little flustered. You ask him what's wrong, and he angrily exclaims that his room is dirty and he cannot see the ocean from his room. He sees the thousand euros in your hands and snatches the money away, vowing never to return to your hotel and that he'll be staying elsewhere. It happens so fast that you do not get the opportunity to object and can only watch as the door slams behind the man. You look down at your hands, where a moment ago you held a thousand euros. You did not make any money today. You take a deep breath and think to yourself, well, at least I'm out of debt. Meanwhile, little did you know, everyone else was thinking to themselves the exact same thing. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy that story. So the point I was trying to illustrate with that story is sort of how a stimulus package works. So I know some of you folks in America and even folks here in Canada are getting a lot of stimulus money from the government. So here in Canada, I think you have to lose your job in order to qualify or you have to be a student or something versus in America, I think the government is just like handing out checks to people, right? But regardless of whether you qualify or not, the point is that if you get the stimulus check, uh, you're supposed to just sort of take it and spend it, right? So go out and spend it and it kind of increases the flow of money in society and that's how you get everyone out of debt. And that's sort of what this story is trying to illustrate, which is that uh, in a society where everyone is in debt, uh, sometimes you just need a little injection of money and just to get the money flowing uh, so that everyone, e even though in the end the customer took away the money, so he didn't end up staying at the hotel and he just took away the money, but uh, no new money has been added to the system, but everyone else is better off. So this is sort of how you should think about money. And the point that I'm trying to illustrate is that one person's spending is another person's income. So if everyone saved their money, that could actually uh, be sort of an issue in terms of the grand scheme of things. You shouldn't think of money as sort of a finite resource, right? Because as we demonstrated in this story, uh, no new money has been added to the system and yet everyone is better off. So it's not like money is a resource like food or water. Uh, money is just sort of abstract. So these days we live in a society where we have what's called fiat money, which is just money that's just sort of make believe, right? So the government says that this is worth money and this is this piece of paper is worth money. So that's why it's worth money. So it's not a commodity like food or water or something like that. So uh, money is sort of abstract anyways. And we should think of money not as a finite resource uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how many bushels of wheat or how many like liters of water is this we should think of money as sort of just being abundant so the more people have money the better it is for everyone so that's why the name of this chapter is called wealth is abundant because uh, the more people get rich it actually increases the likelihood that you're going to be rich and this is because if your neighbors are rich then uh, they spend more money and then that raises the standard of living in your community right because your community business owners uh, people who run businesses around you they're making more money because people around you are spending more money so uh, the more that people become rich the more it actually increases your likelihood of becoming rich. So that's the main point that I was trying to make is that you should not have this scarcity mindset of money where money is like a scarce resource where it's like, oh, if my neighbor has $10 more than me, that then that means that I have $10 less. No, that's not how it works, right? So the more money your friends and your neighbors have, the more likely you're actually to get more rich. It's a non-zero sum game, right? So not only is it a non-zero sum game, it's sort of like a virtuous cycle almost. So the more poor people there are, the more poor people is gonna generate and the more poor everyone's gonna be versus the other way where the richer people are, the richer society is gonna be and the richer you're gonna become. So it's either a vicious cycle or a virtuous cycle. And as a society, we have to choose which one we wanna go towards, right? Obviously. I'm of the mindset that wealth is abundant. So I want to go towards that virtuous cycle where more people become rich. And instead of, you know, being jealous of rich people or hating on rich people, uh, it actually, we should actually look at it from a different way. And we should actually look at it from, oh, if more people are getting rich around me, instead of getting jealous of them, it's like, that's a great thing because 
that means that I stand a higher chance of becoming rich myself. Anyways, that's that's the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, so I'll leave this video here. Hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you like this series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.